if you're an entrepreneur, you should stop pretending to play a startup or stop pretending to be successful because you know exactly what translates into dollars for your company. You know exactly what a good engagement is versus a bad engagement is. But oftentimes, even just in the entrepreneurial world, you're pressured to just throw out big numbers that are like, hey, there was like 30,000 social media impressions today for our platform. But did any of those impressions translate to dollars? Probably not. All right. Welcome. Uh, today, I've got with me Brian Bristol from Pigeon Loans, and I'm excited to talk about what is Pigeon Loans what, and what you've been up to, Brian. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Uh, we've been doing Pigeon Loans for a little while now, so I'm excited to be on this podcast to talk about all of our recent developments and excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Brian and I, uh, we, we've, we've chatted for a while now, and uh, I'm excited to have you on. And Really, we want to talk about three things. Uh, first thing I want to I want to talk about is focus on who you are. You know, who's who's Brian? What's your backstory? And then um, then go move on uh, quickly to pigeon loans. What is pigeon loans? And all the details with that. And how did you grow it? How did you end up where you are? And then um, kind of where you're headed. And then the la- last thing to talk about is really. Um, we've got listeners that are entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs trying to grow their own startup, their own venture, and really trying to take some life lessons from Brian. I'm sure we've we've all made these mistakes through failure and successes, and how to you know how does a listener ta- what are the big takeaways that a listener can take from this conversation? So, so without further ado, let's start with who is Brian? You know, tell us a little bit about you and your backstory, and how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, definitely. So I'll I'll give a disclaimer. Don't take life advice from me. I'm only 24. So got plenty more years to accumulate some good life advice. But um, (laughs) for me, like I said, uh, I'm Brian Bristol, 24 years old, Um, the CEO and founder of Pigeon Loans and also technical guy as well. So been around the block uh, in terms of my young age in Silicon Valley, done some work at Pinterest and into it. And now I'm leading this new startup in Pigeon Loans, which is a company dedicated to enabling friends and family and loved ones to make loans with each other from pretty much anywhere in the world online. So I'll start by kind of giving a brief overview of what I did and how I even got into this space. I've been technical pretty much my whole life. I've always loved computers. I've always loved games. I didn't really go to school in like the whole elementary high school area. Um, to actually study computer science. But when I graduated, I went to Bowdoin College, which is a small liberal arts school in Maine, and studied computer science and philosophy. And that's kind of how I got my start into the whole journey of tech. And when I took that first 101 class, I was like, all right, I like this. I like the ability to create things with computers. I like the ability to make technology do stuff for me that I don't really want to do. Um, it saves me time. It saves me effort. It saves me a lot of pain so I really ran with that I ended up working straight out of school and going to Intuit I did a couple internships in between go ahead and if you don't mind mind me asking you see I didn't realize that you actually started in more of liberal arts and then you took a 101 was it a 101 engineering course was that what it was yeah so So how how did you cross that chasm (laughs) (laughs) yeah liberal arts colleges there's no such thing as engineering because what uh, yeah, they want yeah. to teach you is the ability to study knowledge, basically. So for computer science, I learned how to do computer science and engineer, but not engineering itself. So if I want to learn how to code, I learned about the theory of coding. Like, what is logic behind it? Why do computers talk a certain way? Who came up with this? And then it was up to me to then implement that in some type of workforce setting or like to get an internship or to actually put pen to paper. So it's an interesting way to learn computer science. I would say not everyone loves it. I personally was able to kind of adapt and make it work for me, but it taught me skills in terms of how to do other things so building a business running a business figuring out how to get the right answer how to solve problems without actually knowing where to go to solve those problems those are skills that you pick up in liberal arts schools that are pretty much unteachable so i definitely love the liberal arts education if anyone listening is at a liberal arts school just keep powering through um you'll be able to do they just 
you know, just just right on the board, stackoverflow.com, and he left like he <laughs> walked out the door or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, segueing back, I graduated and ended up working at Intuit. And um, I did a lot of security and computer science work there, but I wasn't necessarily doing my entire passion. I was enjoying working for corporate America and Intuit's a great company. So if anyone's at Intuit, definitely continue to work there because they do amazing stuff there. But I've always wanted to use technology to help the world. So the start of Pigeon Loans came about during the pandemic, like early 2019, not early, early 2020, when the kind of shutdowns began, I was faced with a situation in my own family where money became super tight. So when the stock market was crashing and people were losing their jobs and everyone's hair was on fire and Tiger King was the hottest thing on television, um, my family and pretty much a lot of people that I knew were struggling financially. And I was fortunate enough to still have my software engineering job into it. As anyone knows, software engineering pays a little bit more than most careers. And I was kind of called upon to really help out in this time of need. So everyone has had that conversation. Whether or not you're borrowing money from a friend or family member or you're lending money to a friend or family member. Once that conversation starts, things get interesting. It becomes a little awkward. It becomes a little uncomfortable. Mm. You start to question, all right, do I really want to help you out? Like, why did you come to me? Why didn't you go to someone else? All those different things. And when the pandemic first started, I had got approached by a family member of my own and was like, hey, look, I need a sum of money. And this sum of money is going to shock you a little bit. So get ready for it, right? And when I kind of... Yeah, <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> <laughs> <And> when, I, <laughs> when I got this ask, I was like, all right, well, yeah, I can definitely help you out because obviously no one knows what's going to be the end of this whole pandemic journey. And obviously now we're doing a little bit better than we were way back when. But it was something where I just wanted to help out someone that I know and trust just through this time that we're all kind of struggling with. So... With the sum being so significant, I had to take a step back and say, look, let's make a loan out of this. This can't be something where I just give it to you and I never get paid back because, like I said, I was starting my own career. I was 22. And I was like, all right, I, I still need to be able to eat and do my things with my own cash. So I don't care if I get it tomorrow or the week after, a month later. It could be years from now. But at some point, I, I'll want this back. And I went online to try and find a research or, or try and research a platform to actually create this loan, create documentation, to move money, all this good stuff. And there was nothing there. I searched like Google, I searched the App Store, I searched any type of resources you would think that would have a very simple tool where two people could come on, create a loan with one another, generate a contract, and just move money online. None of that really existed in a, in a robust fashion. So what I did is I said, all right, I've got extra time now because of the pandemic. There's no going out of the house, like you're kind of locked in. I spent 12 weeks during that summer from June of 2020 to September to 2020 building what is now called Pigeon Loans. And when I built that kind of MVP, it was a very basic app, something where I could just use with my family it would have work. But what I wanted to do was showcase what I built. I was like, hey, I'm going to put this on my personal Twitter. I'll put it on my personal Instagram and see how people feel about it. And when I did that, that's when it shifted from just being a cool project to actually a business, an idea, and a, and a concept. Because what happened was I dropped it on my socials and the reception from my friends and family were like super positive, like so significant mm. that I was a little shocked. Did you, did you and... call it Pinch of the Loans at the time? Yeah, well, it's always been pigeon loans from the jump. <laughs> and <laughs> why is that? Just, just for those that yeah. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the the concept came about simply because I was thinking in my head. I was like, all right, well, what's something cool that signifies moving money between people and relationships and communities and all that good stuff? And I took a step back and was like, I was, I was reading at the time, and I was like, oh, pigeons used to move mail from like war camps to other war camps or civilizations used to use it for messaging and yada 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 so i was like 
There's been currency for a long time. There's no way that these pigeons were just carrying letters. They've had to have been carrying money at some point. So what I did, I took the I took the bird and the logo, if you go look us up, I put a, a piece of dollar bill in its mouth as its beak and created what is like pigeon as like this concept of moving money. But then I realized no one would understand what it would be if we just called it pigeon. I was like, all right, that's weird. Maybe we should add like an identifying word to it. So we added loans. And then I sat at it. I hated the name. I literally hated the name for like a week. But <laughs> and what happened is, <laughs> that how yeah, it is? Yeah, I hated the name for a week. And I told my co-founder, I was like, this is garbage. But the funny thing is I kept thinking about it. I kept being like that ugly name, Pigeon Loans, ugly. But then I was like, if I'm sticking with it so hard, it must be a great name. Like, this is something that other people will remember. <laughs> so Absolutely. We yeah, we end up running with Pigeon Loans because, like, you know what? I never forget this name, so I might as well just make the name of the company. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how it came about. And um, when I put it on my socials, my personal socials, people were bombarding me with stories of how their friends had screwed them over once or they had to help out their mm. their family through a tough time or just a colleague that needed some gas money to make it to an interview or something like that. Like there's so many stories where people are like, I wish I had this tool when X, Y, Z. But I was like, you know what? How big is this problem? Yeah. So I, I took, I took a moment to actually look at it. And this is the big statistic that I like to tell people, especially our investors where it's like, there's $200 billion moved every single year in the United States alone as loans between friends, family, and loved ones. And then when we think about the whole world, it's just not the United States, the whole world is a trillion dollars moving every single year as loans between people who know each other, people who trust each other in this whole underground interpersonal loan space. So just knowing that this number is massive, like unfathomably massive, and that there was no real product or company out there solving the problems that are like high default rates or damaged relationships or the ability to kind of track and move money in different avenues and spaces. I just ran with it. We said, let's create a company out of it and let's go through all the pains of doing it. I'd never started my own company, but there's a problem we're actually fixing for people and something that we're speaking to. So let's try our hardest to make something that people want to use. Mm. No, that's awesome. A lot of the, I know that a lot of founders started out of their own pain, right? They're just like, there's nothing here. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that was you. It's like, I, I started out. So when you posted it, I mean, you're like, I'll just post it on my Twitter account. Like, did you, did you, did, did you, was that the moment you opened it up to the wild where anyone could sign up? Like, or is it just like really kind of proof of concept? Like they could like look into and see what was going on or could they sign up and get an account and try it themselves? Yeah. So they could sign up, but I wouldn't say they could do <laughs> pigeon loans, loans by themselves without like my guidance. Uh... It was one of those things where like. I'm not a front end specialist. I don't design UI UX and we're actually doing a whole overhaul right now because there's still points from my like or previous MVP that exist now in the current app. But it's just like if you want to use Pigeon Loans, great. I had a little walkthrough tutorial, you could watch the walkthrough, you'd probably know how to use it. And people did do that at some point or another. But um it was one of those things where you would sign up and you'd have to just call me. I use this. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, look, yes, I'll onboard you. I'll personally walk you through, yada, yada, yada. I love um, that, man. I, I, I do, though, because, like, you know, as a founder, that's one of the things that I don't think people tell you is they don't, they, 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 they go, it has to be perfect out of the gate. You got to, and yeah. it takes them forever to launch something. And you just said, screw it. Like, if they need to call me, I will walk them through it and handhold them through yeah. it. And uh, that's awesome. And, it was, it was funny enough to our first first user that actually wanted to use the platform was my uncle and my uncle was like hey your product's existing right i was like yeah yeah it's up he's like is it an app i was like no it's not an app he's like is it a website i was like yes and i was like all right go on the website and sign up and i was like all right did you figure out how to start it he was like no i keep getting emails but it doesn't tell me what to do so i had to like <laughs> call <laughs> i had to call him up and be like hey uncle like this is how you get it set up let me know if you have trouble and then he was getting to the point where he was trying to set up his bank account. And I guess he had never gone through the whole micro deposits feature where you like, you get two cents from a company to confirm oh, sure. whether or not it's your bank account. And he was like, 
you keep sending me little amounts of money. Don't know what's going on here. <laughs> and I had to send him a text being like, no, that's by design. This is how it's working. And like after like two or three days, he finally got on. And that was a year and a half ago. His loan is still going on to this. Oh, day. that's great. So, so um, he was our first, first user. Oh, that's awesome. And and, and he is a an advocate, right? He's, you got him the T-shirt and everything yeah. and the hat. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, and how many users? So that was your first n n user number one who's still using it, sounds like you said, by the way. And yep. uh, and yep. Act loan is still going. And now fast yep. forward to today, how many users are you at right now? How many loans and users? Yeah, so in total we have about 13,000 users all across multiple different countries, seven or eight, I think, last I checked. Um, we've created what is now 1600 loans so people come to our platform either negotiated or started a contract or completed the process at large for us we're moving quite a bit of money every month um, we had a record month at the end of 2021 which was like over six figures in loan volume itself so we've been doing well and in terms of where we're trying to push forward it's to continue to find people who need us at the time that they need us continue mm. to encourage individuals to help each other out because whether we know it or not financial times are still tough for a lot of people yeah. there's this widening gap of the haves and the have-nots so being able to provide a tool that can potentially bridge that gap saying look i got someone who does have money they're willing to just spot me a thousand dollars and make it work for me and my family that's something that we can help facilitate that conversation and provide a resource for them mm. No, that's awesome. I know in my past, I've I've lent family members money. Pe people, I've been on both sides of that spectrum. People have lent mo me money, and so I know that from a lender standpoint, that has to have solved a big pain in your community. I mean, you're solving the pain point of will I actually get paid back, right? And how do I how do we take that awkwardness out of the equation of just automated, you know, things withdrawing from accounts and transferring and all of that stuff? So that's yeah, that's fantastic. Now, yeah. Oh, definitely. go ahead. You're going to speak to that. No, I was just going to say, yeah, getting paid back, you would think it'd be the number one concern. But even so, a lot of lenders who are on our platform, they utilize this not just to get paid back, but they really care more about helping out someone they know and being mm. comfortable with it. Yes. Too many people have gotten burned, especially in United States kind of culture, with just losing a friendship because they decided to take their money and just disappear. And they were too yes. uncomfortable addressing it. So for us, it's just like, hey, we'll we'll take the burden on of everything that you didn't like prior. And we will allow you the platform and the resources to help out this individual without sacrificing your relationship, without sacrificing kind of this respect that you have for someone that you know and trust. And we'll go through the pains for you so that this can be something that you're helping one another as opposed to creating stress or, or anxiety amongst each other. And that's an excellent point. I mean, it's specifically in your, I mean, any app you could say is really about, if you think about it, it's about having empathy for other people, about recognizing their journey as like what getting in their heads of understanding what they're going through and then realizing and specifically in your app the the people giving those loans out deeply 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 care about the person on the other end mm -hmm. right so it's mm -hmm. um what were moments in that kind of journey because as an entrepreneur you're you have to be almost the master of empathy right of like understanding mm -hmm. your users and their journey what was were there a, were there aha moments within that as you were thinking through that dynamic or have been thinking through? I'm sure that's a continued journey. What are some aha moments that you've had during that journey? Yeah, there's been a, there's been a couple. I think um, one was kind of a small mistake that we made at the beginning that I'll touch on, and then the other is just customers. I think we talk very deeply to our customers to the point where we're going to customer interviews right now we have about 200 currently active customers and we've sat down with pretty much 60 percent of them and said all right what do you like about pigeon what do you not like about pigeon what are the use cases you've had it for and we've, we've gotten some beautiful stories for it so i'll touch on the mistake first which was when i first launched pigeon way back when i created it with me in mind but at some point or another, I shifted thought 
and was like, all right, this is a tool that allows people to get money, get money quickly, like ask for money. Like this is going to change lives for people who just need cash. Mm. And I started to realize that the platform was built so that people can get cash, but it's from the friends and family that they're, they're asking money for. So if you don't necessarily have that friend or family member, it's a little hard to use our platform. Like you don't really have a lot of value add. It's not really something that was built for you because we're not sending you off to a personal loan aggregator to get a loan from like Upstart or, uh, or Goldman Sachs or whatever these types of companies are these days. We're actively giving you a resource for the lender to give money to you. So. I actually spent like two, three, four months going kind of in the wrong direction, advertising to borrowers, advertising to people who need money, trying to create tools and features for them. And then eventually realizing that the product that was made for me in mind, and I was the lender mm. in my specific situation. So I had to take a real step back and say, look, scrap all of this. We changed all of our messaging to be very lenders focused. We changed it all to be very helping other people out focused, we changed it to be the value adds that we're really providing for people in their relationships. And that's when we started to get people using the platform. We sat yeah. kind of idle for a long time at the beginning because we weren't speaking to the right people who need us. And when we shifted to the point where we understood our value adds and what we were creating, that's when we started to actually find the people who want to use our service. And that's when we started to get great customer stories. Um, and I'll segue into the customer story section simply because we, when we talk to our customers, we, we ask them to like tell us everything you hate about Pigeon so that we can just, I guess we're masochists in yeah. that way. We want to know how bad we are. <laughs> <laughs> but there are sometimes stories where it's like you will get a customer on the phone and they will genuinely tell you that you've changed someone's life for the better because they've now become more comfortable doing a loan. I'll mm -hmm. give you one for example. There was a guy and his brother who are creating a loan on our platform. And these are two guys, two macho guys. And the brother is one that won't swallow his pride, won't ever ask for money. He knows he's down bad, but he, he's going he's gonna to tough it out. He's going to do his thing, be his own man type of individual. And then the brother who wanted to kind of help him out was like, look, I would love to help you out. I know you're never going to sacrifice your pride to let me know you need money. So I actually stumbled on this platform called Pigeon Loans. We're not going to just give you money and treat you like a charity. We're not going to just make it a gift. We're going to create a loan and we're going to empower you to basically say, look, I'll give you this cash. You use it to get out of your situation. And then getting out of your situation, you pay me back over time, just like any other bank or institution would. And in having that conversation, you would think, oh man, that's kind of weird. Like, why would someone do this? The exact opposite happened. My mm. brother went from being really prideful to being somewhat empowered, being like, oh, okay, this is just another bill. This is something where I can get some cash real quick. I'm going to pay my brother back every month, just like another bill. And we're going to be pretty much taken care of because Pigeon Loans has given us all the resources for us to just still go to Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving and have fun with the family and know that I only owe like 32% left on my loan to get paid back. Mm. So that was super awesome because he was able to get his bills in order. He was able to get his car fixed. He was able to do all this good stuff for his own life. And all it took was a simple click of a button and a resource to drop all of the kind of pride and ego and uncomfortableness and anxiety and just send it off to a platform and let the money do the money and the relationship still be the relationship. So mm. that's these are stories we're hearing all the time. Um, all different demographics, all different communities, but it, it's great to just hear lives actually getting changed from a very, very simple app. And why do you think diving into that? That's a that's a really cool story. Why, why do you think in that story that you know? Because there there is this mindset of, and I think most people. I mean, I'm I'm a, definitely a culprit of this as well. They have this pride, in, especially in those circumstances. It requires you to like swallow your own pride, right? Of like I. I, I can't make it, right? And how do you think Pigeon Loans is helping change that mindset? Like in that story, was it, do you think because it was a, 
maybe it almost was viewed as a, a third party broker. Like I'm paying the broker rather than like I'm paying, I'm having my brother nag me about it all the time. And it creates this weird dynamic. Like what do you, what, maybe it's multifaceted, like, but what component or components do you think like why the mindset changed there? Yeah, it's definitely multifaceted. So for us on our platform, it's not just the tool itself. We have a little bit of educational aspects as well as content. So if you come to Pigeon Loans, we have like seven, eight, nine, ten articles on just how to have the right conversation, how to go about doing your loan, how to make sure that everyone feels heard and that you're separating the money from your relationship. So oftentimes people will come to our platform and just educate themselves a little bit before they actually get mm-hmm. to the process. Once they've kind of educated themselves, they start the actual process of creating a loan. And because we're bolstering it with email reminders and we're bolstering it with how to's and we're bolstering it with all these resources, you kind of disassociate yourself from the direct one to one connection that you would if you sent a text. You're yeah. more so interacting with a platform that's then going to interact with the person you need to interact with. So it creates almost a smoke screen. And the smoke screen is so powerful that with all the loans we've created on our platform thus far, all 1,600, we have had zero defaults in the past year and a half. Wow. Like everyone has either paid each other back, extended the loan, or just canceled it outright and said, hey, we'll let bygones be bygones. So that's a super powerful reality for us to know that what we're doing is working, and it's working yes. in mass. Wow, that is that's an awesome statistic, and and you've come far from what your uncle on the platform being user number one, where it's like you've yeah. got this amazing smoke screen where it can you know you've got education pieces and versus your your uncle being like, hey buddy, I you know Brian, I need your help, man. <laughs> what are these three cents being deposited in my account? <laughs> yeah, it's come a long way, and I think the beauty is we like to document these stories, so we even have our own podcast. It's called the Chirp. And basically, people that we have amazing stories and hear how they're helping each other in the communities or sometimes even just stories gone wrong. We like to document it and say, look, you're not alone. There's, like I said, a trillion dollars moving around the world that equates to hundreds of millions of people just like you struggling just to open your mouth to ask for help or struggling to figure out what is the right way to go about mixing your relationship with finances. So... People are coming in every two weeks just listening to our stories and we're documenting and making them a thing. And it's a whole community aspect that I think will continue to drive forward as the world becomes more of this haves and haves not or people become more responsible with their own finances. We're just gearing people and giving them the the right tools to get that done in the future. Mm. It's good. No, and, and I want to rewind for a second and ask you a question within the last few minutes we've been talking. You you mentioned, I wrote down that you are you were saying that the value proposition obviously is on both sides to pigeon loans. Is One is you get the, the recipient of the loan, right? The person that gets the benefit of the fact that they're getting cash that they need to do something. But then also you're, you're kind of adding rails and barriers and providing the smoke screen and a lot of benefit to the actual loan, you know, initiator to say, Hey, I want to give that loan. So, yeah. but you, you said there was a moment in which you realized that, you know, if you're talking about marketing and you're talking about, you know, pigeon loans itself, where is the value proposition of the platform itself? And you were saying, Hey, that's, you made that change of like, rather than marketing towards the people that need loans towards the originator of loans, what was that that pivot moment because you said i think i wrote down here you kind of scrapped you know the the way you were doing it and you're like yeah we're not we're not going to market that way anymore what was there a moment of like an aha moment that happened with you or like you're at the whiteboard with your co-founder and you're like yeah this this is like what was the moment for you that was like was there a moment or what 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 was that decision process what did it look like yeah i wouldn't say it's a single moment in time it's one of those things where you bang your head against the wall enough where you're just like what's the problem what's it was the problem? bleeding yeah you're like ah yeah. that hurts <laughs> you're just like all right let me stop banging my head just sit down in silence and figure out yes. maybe there's something i'm doing wrong so yes. it was one of those situations where we didn't really have enough traction to really say, all right, we're going to sacrifice employee headcount or users and all that good stuff. We, it was just me and my co-founder. So we were yes. just like, all right, let's start from scratch and figure out what was it that caused us to create this thing in the first place. 
Yes. And when we realized that we had deviated from that initial value add and from that creation story, that's when it clicked for us. And we did mm -hmm. some experiments and said, hey, let's throw out some new messaging. Let's see how people kind of relate to this new messaging. And mm -hmm. once that was out there, it only took two, maybe three weeks. And we already had like way more interactions than we did the two to three months prior of just borrow stuff. So hmm. it was super eye opening for us at that point. So yeah, and it sounds like you guys are proponents, just like I am. We are as of, of lean startup running rapid experiments, and you use the word experiment. That's why I was extrapolating mm -hmm. on that. So I'm, I'm assuming your experiment you, was just some marketing. You know, you sent out there to say some maybe some ads or something. Is that right? To say, is this mm -hmm. going to resonate with with a, a group of individuals? Is that right? Yeah, it was definitely somewhat in the marketing and the ad space, and because it's easy to spin up. Um, but it was also just like when I was having conversations with people in real life, I start to describe pigeon lines a little bit differently. Like the way I described mm -hmm. it in this podcast is not the same way I used to describe it. Um, sure. So being able to articulate the value adds in the way that it would speak to the people who you'd actually use your platform. I think that's super key for a lot of businesses to be successful. It, it's, yeah. it's harder than it looks to figure out, all right, I create this thing. Who am I actually helping and what problem am I actually solving? Yes. Yeah, that's good. So uh, do you feel like you guys have fit? What's next? Do you guys feel like you've hit product market fit and it's a lot of scale? Or do you think you're still trying to dial that in? Like, where do you think you guys are at currently? And where are you going? Yeah, so in terms of product market fit, I think we're like 90% of the way there. And mm -hmm. fortunately enough, Pigeon Loans is a, a Y Combinator company as of recently in this winter 22 batch. Awesome. And, um, we were just having group events and one of our mentors is Michael Siebel himself. And um, we we're having a group event and someone had talked about, yeah, we'll be at product market fit come demo day. And Michael paused him there and was like, look, none of these companies in YC are going to be ready at product market fit by demo day, including us pigeon loans. So it's just like product market fit is one of those things where you can say you have it, you've got a little bit of traction, you got a little users, but product market fit is is something where the minute you put your kind of value add out there in the market you're trying to serve, people just get it and they get it instantly. And you've provided them the tools and resources to get them to that point. So for us, we have gotten to the point where we think the product sings a little bit and the market likes what we're doing. We just need to get them a little bit closer together, make a little bit more noise and really measure out the puzzle pieces that need to connect so that we finally have something that's humming on all cylinders. And that's, that's our last puzzle piece. So we're working really diligently over the next couple of months within the Y Combinator batch to figure that out. That's why we're doing a lot of customer interviews. That's why we're doing a lot of experiments to just say, all right, what are we missing? What are we missing? What will finally spark the fire that turns us into the next Uber or Airbnb or some crazy company like that. So we're getting there, but we're not there mm. just yet. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's awesome. Congrats on the Y Combinator. That's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see where that guy, where that takes you. I'm sure great, great things are ahead. So yeah, um, yeah, we're excited. Shifting over. So uh, I always say, you know, success, everyone sees the tip of this iceberg and then down below is all the failure. And it's like, but that's where you just learn so much, right? That's why we run experiments, right? It's like you learn a hundred ways not to do something and then you're, but you know, you learn the way to do something and it's like, oh, there's one and 99 failures. And so what have you learned, you know, through this experience, you know, that you really think that an entrepreneur, you know, only being 24, you're young yourself, but wise in your young age that you've can impart on other entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, what wisdom do you think has been some of the most important and pivotal in your own experience? Yeah, I think one thing that stuck with me over the last couple of weeks, just in starting this Y Combinator journey, as well as really pushing the ante on how fast we want to grow, it's the mantra that if you're an entrepreneur, you should stop pretending to play a startup or stop pretending to be successful because you know exactly what translates into dollars for your company. You know exactly what a good engagement is versus a bad engagement is. 
But oftentimes, even just in the entrepreneurial world, you're pressured to just throw out big numbers that are like, hey, there was like 30,000 social media impressions today for our platform. But did any of those impressions translate to dollars? Probably not. Like, yeah, yeah. those are the things that I've come to learn where it's like, all right, it's better for you to be honest with yourself as an entrepreneur and know things are ugly and to try to actually figure out how to make the thing be unugly in the direction you need it to be so you can make money as opposed to just playing startup and playing success and trying to show out as much as you possibly can in hopes that, oh, maybe it'll end up fixing itself because it it definitely does not fix itself. So that's definitely my kind of big takeaway and learning over the past year and a half doing this. It's at points in times we had to play startup to just maybe get an interview with an investor or to get a conversation going with a connection that we really didn't need. But at the end of the day, the the best investors and the best people that are working on Pigeon Loans, they know the true stories and the true metrics, and they believe in us regardless. So mm-hmm. have that support is way more powerful than trying to convince someone you're already balling. And it, it's just a harder conversation. And it, it pushes you to actually try and say, all right, I got to make sure that I succeed if I, if I want to be able to showcase this to the people that I care about and actually make a name for myself. No, that's really good. That's throw out the vanity metrics and look at the real ones and say, Mm -hmm. what are you, what are you focused on? It's hard, you know, because that is so relevant, I think across the board, because even if you take a, I don't know, I'm sometimes I'm terrible at, you know, I need to go to the doctor and check something out because I'm like, I'm feeling kind of weird in my arm or something, you know, and you go, Mm -hmm. I don't, it's fine. Everything's great. And you just want to almost ignore it like a startup, right? Everything's good. And you kind of preach from the mountains that everything's perfect and wonderful, but it it causes this fantasy of like, you don't want to look at the ugly and fix what's wrong. And so that's very good advice yeah yeah definitely and it it can grow to be a big problem man like one example is quibi quibi was a three point some billion dollar company came and went just as fast as it came and it's because they were measuring things that had nothing to do with success and um yes it's it's a double-edged sword for sure yeah and what does success look like for pigeon loans so for us it's really a world-changing mantra we really want to say, look, anytime you ever think about relationships and money movement or finances, vision loans need to be that first thought. So the same way people think about Coca-Cola when they think about soda, or they think about Nike when they think about shoes and athletics, we need to make that exact same association between loans and money movement between friends and communities that we do at Pigeon Loans. And that's a very big hill to climb and it's going to take years for us to get there but we believe we can do that because we we've seen that there is a need here it's just up to us to really articulate that we're here to solve that need and we're doing it for the right reasons and for the right people so Mm. that's that's the general aura um (laughs) we'd love to change the world in that way and i think we definitely can but this is definitely just the beginning of that journey that's an awesome goal. Uh, you definitely would change the world for the better. That's for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Brian, any other imp- last imparting words you'd wanna you'd wanna say, or or you feel pretty good? No, if you definitely wanna contact me, like I said, I'm very accessible. So my email is b is in boy Bristol, which is like the city in Connecticut, at pigeonloans.io. Our website is www.pigeonloans.io. Feel free to pop your head in there if you just want to read the education or sign up or actually use the platform. Definitely let me know if you need a walkthrough because I still do those walkthroughs to this day. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm always happy to just hop on a conversation and hear your story about your loans as well because those really brighten up my day. But uh, I, I was, I'm excited to be on this podcast and hopefully I didn't bore everyone with my amazing <laughs> loan stories that people so much. <laughs> no, they're awesome stories. We need more of those. So I appreciate you being on, Brian. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Josh.